2022. I'm doing a tour of my rabbit tree as I'm starting to wind it down. And then the front barn through the man door here is where uh, I would keep my breeding stock and I would do the breeding from in here. Now it's empty because I'm winding it down and making it uh, less and I've moved them to the back barn. So this is the front breeding barn. These are the cages where I kept my Florida white breeding does. The top are the does, and the bottom you'll see where the bucks. Now the bucks are always bigger cages, 24 by 30 at least, the B39 here, you can see the size of the door. And that's so that when I put a, a doe in there, that uh, I have lots of room to get her in and out. There's still room for the feeder in the door. And I put the water bowl just to the side here just to the right side here. The center cages here is where the New Zealands were. The top would all be does. Um, any two by two cages would be where I'd have the does. And I would uh, breed them from here and then when it's ready for kindling, I would move them to the kindling pens at the back barn. Now here again, these are bigger cages at the bottom. These are buck cages, B20 four there and you can see the size of the door as well here. I like nice big doors to get in and out when I'm doing the, taking the doors to the bucks. You'll see that I have a center trough here. That's my flush trough and it goes all the way to the back where I have a sewage pump and it's the same for the, the Florida white cages as well. I forgot to mention that there's also a a sump pump at the back here and uh, things flush in there pump and go all the way outside and I'll show you where that is in a moment here and on the other side here same idea all the top cages and at the back here the two by twos would be all the holding pens for the breeding does and bucks at the bottom so you see I had room for six bucks for the New Zealand's and then here is the sewage system that goes into the pump here and it goes flushed right outside there. This is just water coming in from the back uh, so I would have pails full for flushing. And you can see my fans, I have three fans and depending on what's going on would be the temperature, would depend on whether the small, medium, or large would be running, or, or a combination of them. And even at the top, there's a fan that would move the air through the room. And then at the other end, going to the other part of the barn, which I use just for feed and storage and, and my workshops, I would have a fan up above the door there as well, just to move air through. And I use the window for air coming in. I'm moving now to the uh, back barn. And uh, I built this enclosure here, just sort of a compound to uh, keep all my stuff, wood and uh, my wheelbarrows, all the various bar barrels I have, and uh, saw horses, ladders, different things like that. Great place to store things. There's my wood storage right there. Now that's the west lean to, and we'll look at that in a minute, but we're gonna go into the back barn here. Hey bunnies, and we got lots of bunnies in here. These are the kindling cages to the right, and uh, they're 24 by 36, with uh, slots at the back for the for the uh, hanging nest boxes. I would hang nest boxes at the back.
see on the other side there all the two by two holding cages. Uh, there's uh, 32 on that one wall there. And uh, right now I'm just using them for Florida Whites. And then when we go out the back door, you can see that uh, there's two transformers on the wall here. And that's what I use to keep my water bowls from inside here and outside where we're going now to the north lean to. There's another transformer in the middle of that row there, just above the cages there at the center, you can see. And it runs all these cages, 32 of them here. So we're gonna go into the north lean to and so there are 10 i meant to fail to mention there are 10 kindling cages and then i have eight uh, holding pens here um, and then i have another four holding pens here so as i move the litters through the kindling cages uh, take the litters out with the dough always and move them into these cages they're 24 by 36 they're my older design and then the kindling cages are available for other does to come in and they can have a real production system going. So these are all outside and you can see that I've just built the, the uh, roof there is just for me to keep the rain out. It does snow here. The one transformer inside runs all these heat bowls here. And uh, here I would keep some bucks. Again, larger cages, larger door. And then all these are all two by two cages and they're all walled, and so they're good rearing pens to get them ready for breeding. Going out the back barn, you can also see that I have a fan in the middle blowing this way, and then the exhaust fans are on the end of the wall taking it out that way, so there's a current going. You'll also see extension cords at the top there, and they power my uh, 40 watt bulbs, trouble lights, I put under the nest box in the winter to keep a little heat in the nest box uh, just to keep the kits alive. And they're all run off of uh, my wise plugs that I can control off my wife, off my iPhone, and I uh, can turn them on and off. And the fans are the same way, they're all controlled uh, wirelessly. I have internet in the barn here. So we're just going to go now to the the west lean to it's not as big as the north lean to same idea there's a fence at the back and uh, I built another fence here on this side on the left here and then I just put a cover over it. it's not as high as the other one and same idea two by two cages here and uh, they all have uh, FRP dividers and they're good for the winter time I put a piece of plywood in there I put the heat bowl in there because there's a transformer right here. And it's an encapsulated transformer, it's all weather, and it runs the bowls so that the water doesn't freeze. And I keep rabbits here all winter, but because I'm downsizing, I don't have any right now. But as you saw, those litters, they'll soon be coming out here. It's minus 10 here today in Southern Ontario. And uh, I just wanted to show you uh, how I raise rabbits outside all winter. So it's minus 10 Celsius today. And there's snow on the ground, not a lot, but it sure is cold today. But uh, this is my west lean-to. Uh, the back of the cages face the west. Uh, there's a roof over it. And the roof over it is just partial, and that's just to keep the rain off when I'm looking after the rabbits anytime I have a door here. And I have, I even have lights. And these are my cages. I have uh, 16 cages here. And I raise the rabbits all winter. Now, you'll see that uh, what I do is I, uh, 
I have a transformer uh, located here. And you can see the light is on. And uh, I run wires. I run wires here along the uh, top of the cage and uh, along the second tier here. You can see I run the wires here. These are my connectors and I use the quick disconnects quick disconnects so I can disconnect the cages in the summer I put the wires up and out of the way and uh, these cages are with made of FRP material so the ceiling the back and the sides are solid and the bottom and the front is wire I put a piece of plywood in usually about 8 by 10 and on the bottom of the plywood if I can get this up here on the bottom of the plywood I screw in a couple screws you see here and uh, and one at the other side and when I place it in the cage it sort of keeps the, the plywood in one place they still move it around but generally uh, it stays in one place and it gives them something to sit on I find the worst thing in the winter is the wind it's not so much the cold for me anyways it's more the wind and so facing west uh, I'm spooking them because I'm talking here. Um, facing west, the back wall is uh, a fence, but I also have solid uh, sheet metal in behind. Keeps the wind, and it's well protected here. And with the wood, they can sit on it. And with my heated water bowls, uh, it's good till about minus 15 Celsius before they start freezing up a little bit. But usually in the center, they still stay open. Uh, I raise rabbits here all winter and they actually do very well and uh, they're healthier out here I never have to worry about the right amount of fresh air and stale air and I think this is the cat's meow or should I say it's a rabbit's hair <laughs> anyway and then the last area that I have so I actually have one two three four five areas there's the front barn the back barn and the north lean two the west lean to and now these are my driveway cages and they're located in this driveway that comes to the barn from the road and uh, you can see that they have a, a shingle top they have sheet metal to keep the wind out the doors are wood and that's only to keep the north wind out this is facing the north and when the wind comes uh, it can blow right on these rabbits here and so what you see here is there's 24 pens here they're two by two they're rearing pens they're under the the branches in the summer very shaded here beautiful and here's two rows here of 24 by 24 inch cages so there's 72 cages in total here in the driveway gives me lots of room to uh, rear them in the summer they'll come out here in may uh, april may and then I'll show them in the fall, which I'll be doing now. So the ones that are left are the ones that I've called all summer. And um, this is where I get my water here. I run a hose from the back to here. This is my judging area, just a little enclosure I built to keep the rain off in case I'm loading rabbits to go to a show. This is a table that comes down. It uh, just folds down. I won't, uh, this undoes and it folds down. And that is my rabbit tree, Peter Tursa, October 5th, 2019.